What's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to have a little bit of a discussion in addition to some news about potentially Persona that could be happening on the Nintendo Switch soon, but before we get into anything, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Now let's go ahead and start off with a little bit of a controversy that started out with my good buddy RGT over on his channel. First on Twitter, then it spilled over to his channel, but we're not here to argue or discuss what he had to say about Xenoblade and about Fire Emblem and the representation on the Switch or whatever the case is, or they should be doing something else. We're not here to talk about that. What we are here to talk about though, is what Xenoblade and Fire Emblem are and how the fans deserve what they've been getting. Because a lot of you guys might not know the history, actually the somewhat recent history about Xenoblade and Fire Emblem. I feel that these two franchises deserve to get regular releases on Nintendo hardware. These two franchises have struggled in the past and the fans of these franchises have poured every bit of heart, sweat, tears, Operation Rainfall, going out there and buying, supporting what they can do to keep their favorite franchise or franchises alive. And I feel that if you look at Intelligent Systems, if you look at Monolith Soft and what they are with Nintendo and what they're doing, it makes 100% sense that they would continue to do what they're doing based off of what has happened. So let's go ahead and first start off with just a little bit of history for those who don't know. Fire Emblem was on its deathbed. If Fire Emblem Awakening didn't do well enough, I think they said something like 250,000 units plus, or I know it was something under a million units, but it was something not really significant. If it didn't do enough, it was going to be done. They were going to move on. They were going to think of something else. But Fire Emblem Awakening came out and it was a smash hit selling around 2 million units plus or right around that point to the point to where it really elevated. It really boosted intelligent systems. I mean, they were back from the dead because the last couple Fire Emblem games were not doing very well sales wise, even after they had brought it out for a worldwide audience. So that was kind of make or break for them. So they really put everything in. It was kind of like, hey, this might be the last one. And it was far from it after looking through everything that they've been through. And if you look at it, obviously Fire Emblem has been doing extremely well. Fire Emblem Fates came out after that a couple years later or a few years later and it ended up selling really well and then fire emblem three houses has came out and that is the best selling fire emblem game of all time and that is the best selling intelligent systems game of all time as well now if you move over to xenoblade xenoblade model is soft they obviously had some issues with xeno saga and profitability they had some issues with bots and kaitos they had some issues with a lot of their other games until xenoblade came out once xenoblade came out not only did they sell a million copies but they had the fans behind them while a lot of their games obviously had their fans and everything, the lore, the passion, the story, what they built with Xenoblade was a notch above even Xenosaga, in my opinion. And I love Xenosaga to death, or Bots and Kaitos, or any of the other games that Monolith Soft created when they split off from Square Enix. And when you look at Xenoblade and what they've been able to craft, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, built with their side team, not even the full strength of Takashi Team 1, built with their side team with some outside help here and there, that is the best selling Xenoblade game of all time. Now, if you're a business, because remember, Monolith Soft is a subsidiary, they help out first party wise, like with Splatoon and with Zelda, and with Animal Crossing, and with various different games, but their main team still work on what they wanna work on, and Xenoblade is their franchise that they're nurturing and trying to build up. Does it make sense to sit there and try to request some type of weird, you know, dead IP that you might or might not know how to do? Or does it make more sense? Because games take years to build. This isn't a snap your fingers and all of a sudden Xenoblade 3 comes out. But if you see that Xenoblade 2 has a lot of momentum behind it, people are liking it, the sales are tracking way higher than anything that you've ever done before, obviously the best thing to do is capitalize on that momentum and make the next Xenoblade game. And the same thing goes for Intelligent Systems, which by the way, Intelligent Systems isn't owned by Nintendo. They're not a subsidiary. All they are is a third party company that Nintendo works very closely with. So in slang terms, second party or so, but Intelligent Systems is ingrained with Nintendo, but they're not owned by Nintendo. So Intelligent Systems, they have a president, they have a CEO, they have all that type of stuff, and they're looking to get paid as well. So if you're coming off of 2019 and you see that Fire Emblem Three Houses is the best selling Fire Emblem game in less than a year, selling over 3 million units, 
why would you not capitalize on that momentum and make the next latest, greatest, best Fire Emblem game? Why would you try to reach off into some dead IP like Punch-Out or F-Zero or something like that, which Nintendo probably wouldn't even agree to. It makes zero business sense to do that. Monolith Soft and of course Intelligent Systems aren't responsible for reviving Nintendo dead IPs. One of them is a subsidiary that works on RPGs and helps out with supplemental work with Nintendo's other big franchises. Intelligent Systems does three different games. They do WarioWare, they do Paper Mario, and they do Fire Emblem. You don't need to stretch themselves thin or do other things like that. It doesn't make sense to me when you have a passionate, strong, affectionate base that wants the next Fire Emblem game. And based off of where these franchises were, remember guys, Xenoblade Chronicles almost never came over to the US. Nintendo didn't want to localize it. They're like, eh, this game looks like crap. I don't know what they were thinking, but they didn't feel it was worthy of that. Thankfully, Nintendo of Europe got it done. So then finally, after the Operation Rainfall, we were finally able to get the games. But these two games were literally on deathbeds at some point. And the fans have purchased and have supported. And you know what? They deserve regular games every three to four years. Big games. We're not talking about re-releases or Shadow Dragon or old games being put on NSO that people are trying to sit there and say, oh, well, it has this, this, this. No, we're talking about new big regular games every three to four years. Fire Emblem fans deserve that. Xenoblade fans deserve that. And this is not a knock on anybody or anybody that has said anything at all. This is simply me talking as a fan, covering it when these franchises weren't doing well, when things were bad and they were about to go away. I personally feel just like Mario or just like Zelda or just like Yoshi or just like Pokemon or anything, this fan base is being cultivated, nurtured and brought up. Now, obviously they're not the status of those games, but at the same time, profitability wise, the fans have proven that they deserve, they actually deserve to be able to get those games regularly. And Nintendo is a multi-billion dollar corporation with tons of developers and they can make some other developer or they can get some other developer like so, for example, like Mercury Steam that made Metroid Dread. Nobody was asking for Monolith Soft to make Metroid Dread or something like that. The studio that's familiar with the Metroidvania style of games. So other companies can make the type of games that people are looking for. Monolith Soft and also Intelligent Systems are passionate about what they do and they're smart about what they do because they know that fans want these certain type of games and it's gonna bring in more revenue and more cash than doing something kind of crazy and new or something like that. All the different IPs that people are asking for when it comes to Nintendo have nothing to do with Monolith Soft and nothing to do with Intelligent Systems. And those IPs like Donkey Kong and like Pikmin and all these other stuff, those can all be made by other people. Intelligent Systems, Xenoblade, Fire Emblem, Monolith Soft have nothing to do with that. So I'm looking at it overall and these fans have struggled. These fans have went through a lot, myself included. I'm a huge Monolith Soft. I'm a huge Intelligent Systems, I'm a huge Fire Emblem, I'm a huge Xenoblade fan, and these fans have struggled. We've all struggled in this, right? And I just feel that we deserve continuous games, and these type of responsibilities that people are trying to sit there and say that Monolith Soft or Intelligent Systems, stop it. You guys aren't in these companies, you don't know what they want to do, they have plenty on their plate, and we can have our cake and eat it too. We can get Xenoblade and Fire Emblem regularly and also get Punch-Out and also get Kid Icarus if Nintendo wants to do that. That's on Nintendo to get that done. These games aren't taking away anything from you guys because they always make these type of games. And if you go back to the Wii, there was a Fire Emblem on the Wii. There was a Punch-Out on the Wii. There was a Donkey Kong on the Wii. There was, you know, a Xenoblade on the Wii. There was various different franchises that have been dead for a while, right? Or that have been gone for a while that weren't on the Wii and also had Xenoblade and stuff like that. So it's not like it's impossible or these are taking away anything. That's on Nintendo, okay? That's completely on Nintendo. And yeah, I want those as well. But at the same time, not at the expense of getting my regular, because we deserve and we have earned that regular Xenoblade, regular Fire Emblem, regular monolith soft that they're gonna do like a brand new IP and not have to stick to something that they're maybe not familiar with and take a flyer on something because people are screaming and yelling somehow that these are responsible for you not getting what you want, which is just absolutely ridiculous at the end of the day. So yeah, this is kind of how it works, guys. There's multiple different development studios. They work on different games here 
and when those games are available or when they're ready to go they'll be ready to go with the team that is specialized and can get the job done in that area so i'm looking forward to seeing what happens maybe at nintendo direct maybe we see a bit more but what are your thoughts on this guys when it comes down to everything like i said no shots at anybody obviously some people are going to be like oh well this person that person no shots i just wanted to talk from the heart as a fan from these two franchises and of course if nintendo's listening nintendo's watching all of that to know that all of us Fire Emblem fans and all of us Xenoblade fans, we appreciate the consistent Xenoblade and Fire Emblem stuff. And we'll continue to be supporting these franchises because they just keep on getting better and better. So what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here. It looks like we have a Persona 5 Royal leak on the Nintendo Switch. Well, maybe there was a listing on a, I think, German website here i think it's wog.ch or world of games and i'm looking at this listing here and i can see and it says nintendo switch boxed version playstation 5 box version playstation 4 box version and the xbox boxed version so it's very interesting because it seems like this listing has been updated with the information that we got at the recent xbox slash bethesda press conference or showcase of games and also the press release that we got with the playstation 5 with atlas and everything so obviously in that press release and in the little graphics they never showed the nintendo switch when it comes to persona 5 world they never showed anything like that but this listing has it grouped here with the other versions so it has been updated in some type of way now do they actually have information that persona 5 royal is coming to the switch or that it's been listed for the switch in some way or they just magically update it itself or maybe it's just a misprint or there's a problem there we don't know now i know i recently talked about this in a video and nate from direct feed games feels that persona is coming to switch but it seemed like he was unsure on what persona games are coming so his hint here or his thought process maybe maybe it wasn't a hit but his thought process was well maybe persona 3 and persona 4 are coming maybe persona 5 royal isn't coming so it'll be interesting to see if that plays out now i'm thinking that seems to be likely i mean i have heard that yes persona 3 persona 4 definitely coming now persona 5 i have not heard any rumors or anything outside of what we got beforehand and some of the stuff was obviously disproven i mean there's been some loose stuff here and there but i've been very careful about reporting on what i've heard because i've heard so much stuff before with persona 5 and i don't want to sit there and act like oh it's coming it's coming it's coming like i've been doing beforehand and it ended up not so to me, we're gonna have to wait and see on this, but there is this listing right here from World of Games, and maybe it is going to be coming because it has been updated with Xbox and PlayStation 5. So we'll see if it happens here, but what are your thoughts on everything that we discussed when it comes to Xenoblade and Fire Emblem in addition to Persona 5 Royal. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell, and we will see you for the next video. Peace.